Hi everyone! In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to assemble the cube for your Gigamings. Now, this video is just going to be on the assembly, so if you didn't buy the DIY version and would like to know how to take it apart, then click on the video in the annotation right there. It'll take you to a different version of this video that will also include the disassembly of it. But for this, this will just be for the DIY version of the cube. So if you want to watch that, stay here. So, for those of you that want to stay here, let's get to the assembly. Okay, so after you open up all of the bags of all the pieces, just throw them into one big pile. They don't need to be sorted or anything. And just ignore the stickers that are already on my pieces. You know, I know you yours won't have the stickers, so... But yeah, whatever. Oh, and sorry for the bright light on the desk here. I have the exposure turned up so that you can see the detail of the black pieces. Okay, so now let's get to the assembly. Go ahead and take a screw and a spring. And just a note is I have purchased longer screws. So and these are from NicePuzzles.com. They're like the screw plus washer plus spring set. And cube for you also has their new long springs. So yeah, whatever, it'll work. So put the spring on with this flat side facing down. I'm not sure why you need to do that, but I think it's so that the spring doesn't scrape against the plastic down in there and creates plastic dust, I guess. So, yeah, just stick it in there and down in. Now, with my particular screws, I have found that I need to screw them in with 25 hand turns so that all of the pieces fit snugly in between the centers. But it may differ for the screws that you're using, so just if the pieces, when you put them in, don't fit right, then you may need to adjust the screws. So I'm going to do that 25 times. Okay, so generally when you pull on it, the it should just barely or not even at all come out of the little notch from the core. Okay, so do this just one more time. And after that, go ahead and take one of these larger edges and the these center edges and just slide it onto one center and do the same with another thing. And make sure they're in there snugly so that they don't fall out. So if you have different screws than mine, make sure that you counted the amount of wrist turns that it took for you to screw in one of these centers, and then apply that, that same number for all of the others, so that you have even tension throughout it. Okay, so after you know the... I'm just going to get those, just get them out of the way. After you know how many turns it should that you should apply to screw in these, go ahead and screw in the rest of the centers except one. We will be saving that for when putting in the last few pieces of the puzzle. Okay, all finished except for that last piece that I left off on purpose. So go ahead and start finding these pieces that I showed you before and fit them together like this and then just put them between any two centers. There. Do the same with another set and put those right next to the other ones. There, just like that. Then find one of these corner center pieces. Just look, looks like this. Stick that right on there. Then find one of these outer edge pieces. Just look like that. Put one there. Find another one. Put it here. Then take a corner piece and stick it down in there. Then find another corner center. Put it right there. Another here. And then an outer edge. There we go. Put that in there. And then one of these inner edges. And then uh, a center edge. Where are they? There's one. Slide it down in there and do the same for the other side. And there we go. There's the first corner section. So basically, you just continue doing this until you've got the whole thing filled up, except for this last section here. Okay. 
And the last piece. There. Okay, now there's a few things I want to say about assembling this. So I'll rewind the video a bit. So it, it's about getting these pieces in. So see what I recorded. So you see, if I take this little center edge and try to shove it, ugh, it can be tough. So you want to make sure to try to push down on this middle edge piece. So yeah, after you get one in, the other will come in much more easily. And another thing is when I was, I assembled this corner section here first, and then I worked on to this one. And it was very difficult to like get this corner. I had to bring it down into here and then bring the pieces. It was a little difficult. So I just kind of shoved the whole mechanism over. So here's where I showed that. Now, as you probably know, the Gigaminx uses the same mechanism as the V-Cube 5, only in a dodecahedron form. And if you've seen my tutorial for the V-Cube 5, you know that we just continue assembling each corner section, although to do that, of course, the center would be there. So we'd just be assembling each corner section until it would be completely assembled. But when it comes to the last corner section, it is practically impossible to get this last corner in there. And the same goes for like these edge pieces too. And with these weak stocks here, it is very it's very risky that you could go and break this. So, it's better to just put this on afterwards. So we're going to be putting the pieces up layer by layer instead of by corner section. So just go ahead and do that. Oh, and just a note, make sure that you end with one of these outer edge pieces so that you can, uh, you may have to pull them apart. A little difficult, but just kind of squeeze it in there. Hopefully all the pieces won't go flying off. There we go. So for the next layer, what we want to do is take the these corner and edge pieces and then just kind of all fit them in there and hold them in place until they, they're all in there because they'll slip down into the hole. So after you get this far and you've got two corners and an edge to go, no, one corner and two edges, then put the corner in there first and then put the edge piece in between the cor the last two edge pieces in between the corners, like that. And the other one, get in there, there. And just put these little outer edge pieces in between them all. Okay, so now for the final section of it. Oh, and ignore that. I already went through two of these blue stickers. One wore out, I replaced it, and the other one fell out afterwards. Ah, bad cube. Okay, so for the next and last part, if I can get to it, okay. Take the centerpiece and go ahead and stick on a center cap. It's just to elevate it. And then just start putting in these pieces around it. I'll zoom in. So put the center edges around it like this. And then the corner centers just like that. And just kind of push on the, set the, the edge centers. Then take the Gigaminx and just the way the structure works, you know, it'll stay together quite well. Then just turn it upside down like this. And then just put it right on top and and it pops right in place. Pop off the center cap, and then you can screw in the last screw. And remember to screw it in with the same number of wrist turns, and if you don't get what a wrist turn is, a turn that you can make with your whole wrist. All right, now that you have the Gigaminx all assembled, it's time to set the tensions, because right now we have it set pretty tight here. So go ahead and loose, loosen it using the same amount of turns for each center. And I'm just going to, after I adjust each screw, I'm going to put a center cap on to just let me know that I've already tightened that one. Now, I believe 15 will be a good amount for me. So, yep, just go ahead and do that with yours. Whew. 
Phew! My arm is tired. There, and now I've got it to a much better tension. If you need to continue to adjust your tension, then just go ahead and pop off a center cap, tighten or loosen, and then pop off another center cap, tighten or loosen, and so on and so forth. And just keep in mind, the more that you loosen the puzzle, the more and more it will lock up as you turn the layers. So after you got that all done, you can go ahead and put the stickers on. Okay, now let's go on to applying the stickers. Now before you get to this, you need to decide what kind of color scheme you want to do. Now for me, I chose to have the, the regular yellow opposite white, and then with white, with blue on top, I have red on the right side, orange on the left side, and green on the bottom, which is the normal color scheme for most cubes. And then I put this lighter yellow in the space available, and I put it here so that it would be, you know, pretty far away from this yellow, because I think the colors would kind of clash together. And then I put this light blue opposite this dark blue, and I put the I put this dark green opposite this light green. And I didn't really worry about like what shades of green and blue to put on this side. So I just put it on brand random randomly. So this is the dark blue and this is the green. And then as for the purple, pink, and gray, I just kind of put them on randomly also, but keeping the purple and pink opposite with each other. And I also tried to keep keep it kept it in tune with my Megaminx here. Yeah, it, it's not looking too good right now. And I also switched around the tiles so that this would also have basically the same color scheme as this. Okay, now let's move on to actually applying the stickers. I am going to be using a method that Chris Bird, Monkey Dude 1313 showed in his video about when he first got his Gigaminx, so I'll be applying that here. Now one thing that comes with your stickers is something that is called application tape. At least I think that's what it's called. I don't know if it's technically called that. So it's just this big sheet of paper here. Yeah, there we go. Sorry I had the exposure too up. So yeah, it just looks like this. And what I want you to do is take, uh, cut off a section, cut it, yeah, in about half. There, it's there. Had a little trouble. So, okay, that cut did not work very well, so I'm just going to be using this side. So, what you want to do is take your stickers, or, yeah, take the application, tape off, there we go, and just peel it off like that. Make sure I got the flat side of the tape. Then just stick it over your stickers. Yeah, just like that. I got a little, some of the lower stickers, but whatever. And then push hard over them so that they will come off with the tape. And then just peel it off nice and... Ah! Grr. So much for that. But nonetheless. And then just take your stickers and then just stick them on there. Try to get them on as best as you possibly can and like that then just push hard on them and then peel off the tape there mine a look yeah mine do look a bit crooked so ah another one didn't come off so for stickers that you didn't get on there take an exacto knife or hobby knife whatever and then just take the sticker like this one that was left on there. Then just stick it right on there, trying to get it as centered as best you can. Push on the sticker and pull out the knife. There. And now for the rest of the stickers, take another section off like that, like this. And then just apply them on the same way. Okay, I hope that's straight. Push down and peel off. So do that one more time for this section, or this section, not sure which though. And then for the last part of it, just take it and put it over on all of them. And peel it off. There we go. So after you finish that, you'll have a completely stickered Gigaminx. Now the reason why I wanted you to do those in sections is because I found that when I took tape, and put it over stickers and then turned it upside down to see it. Like, I couldn't get it so that all the stickers were centered correctly. So, yeah. And when you get all the stickers on, have
have fun mixing it up.